Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is preseason football on EA Sports. We're just about set to get started, and this ought to be a good one, between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Detroit Lions. With that, let's head inside the Ford Field in Detroit. We're standing by are the two men who will bring you this one, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Downtown between Brush Street and I-375. That's where we're located in the heart of Detroit at Ford Field, which first opened back in 2002. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Detroit Lions. Charles Davis alongside me, and I'm Brandon Gordon. And, folks, the wait is over. Yes, it's just the preseason, but football is back in your living room. And I'm excited. I know you are as well. The summer heat feels good on these old bones, especially because we're not putting on pads. We don't have to be out there in that heat running into other people. But I'm glad these guys are. Football is back. Set to go from Detroit as Matt Prater approaches and booms it away. This fielded at the two. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. They'll be led out by their veteran quarterback out of North Carolina State. It's Phillip Rivers. In some ways, he reminds me of a past NFL great who played the quarterback position as well. John with the opposition, trash talking a little bit, doesn't mind getting hit and battered around some that kind of gets him into the game. But once it's time to lock in, Phillip Rivers does that as well as any quarterback in the league. Now the first carry for Ronald Jones. Call it no gain on the game's first play. And it's second down now. And one advantage for this offensive unit is the big target, Mike Evans. Play to his strength, his size, and catch radius. Throw it up there, let him go get it. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. And nearly an interception here on their opening drive. But instead, third down. And the starting crew defensively for Detroit. As Darius Slay continues to improve at the quarterback position, he may live up to his own nickname as the Slay Maker. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. From the gun, Rivers dancing to his left. And that is incomplete. third down is a key down in any game you play and third down defense something we got to watch in this one got to be effective on the passing downs that's a pretty good first step right there so on now is the Clemson man Bradley Pinion to punt this one away Jamal Agnew is deep to return it be a 44-yard boot, just a yard on the return as he's covered up quickly. And the Lions will take over. So here are the Lions now as they get set for their opening drive. They'll be led out by a former Pro Bowl quarterback out of the University of Georgia, Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford is a big arm guy who's learned how to temper some of his throws. Actually has added a lot more touch and accuracy as his career has gone along. Big time confidence in his arm though. Any throw you want, he can make it. They'll run for the first time with Johnson. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain. Second down. 
And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. On second down now, it's Johnson. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. The starting 11 defensively for Tampa Bay. Levante David is a tackling machine. He's always where the ball is. The Bucs with an extra defender now in the secondary here on third down. Out of the gun, Stafford. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. This is taken at the 15. 51 yards on the punt there. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Trey Flowers there on the tackle. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And he is able to take this way down into Detroit territory. It's a big play there for the Buccaneers. 52 yards. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be, because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. So the field flips here as they'll go to work at the 20 now on first and 10. We got four. We got four. Out of the shotgun, it's Jones. And just a couple yards there down to the 17. Two yards that time, a stark contrast from the big chunk on the previous play. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. <laughs> Play action now, Rivers. Toward the end zone, but that's gonna wind up incomplete. Well, he kind of forced that one there, didn't he? It's almost like he predetermined where he was gonna go with the football. Yeah, and he wasn't really going through progressions. He wanted to go to his top guy. You do that against this defense, they'll make you pay, won't they? Yeah, they certainly will. They react very quickly to the thrown football. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Rivers to throw it, sliding out of the pocket. Open man is Godwin, it's complete. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Sometimes it's designed, and sometimes you just have to know when to leave the pocket and move and make something happen. And on that play, he was able to get on the run and was still accurate throwing the football. Jones and a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. Now we're going to get a timeout. Here's we've got an injured Buccaneer. Definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. And the ball smack dab on the five yard line. Here's second and goal. I'm going back to you. I'm going back to you. 
Off the play fake here. Rivers steps away to his left. And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. A five-yard touchdown catch as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. Well, he scrambled outside of the pocket, wondered what was going to happen there. He fired a dart. That's what happened. He certainly did. Scrambled left, looked left, and then left it in the receiver's hands with some dispatch. In the receiver's hands, in the end zone for the score. Matt Gay on for the extra point. And that one gives the Bucks a 7 to nothing lead. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And Detroit getting set to go now. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion. Guys a little bit jumpy. Yeah, you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. Just like us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went three and, and out. that opportunity. <laughs> well, right. No, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. <laughs> Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, hey, we got everybody coming. Oh, we just snuck out there and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. From the 41, Stafford. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. A shotgun snap for Stanford. He's got his man on the crossing route. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. Definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. So, from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 34. From the gun, here's Stafford. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The intended target, TJ Hawkinson. And that'll bring up second down. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. To throw again. Stafford, man open as Keelan Cole complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Buck 17-yard line. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Throwing a Stanford. And all this is taking him one-handed. What a catch. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. Got to love the catch. I think you got to love the gloves as well. <laughs> yeah, these one-handed catches, that was great. And they're fun. They become a little more ho-hum, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. And I know that it sounds like we're taking credit away from the guys, and we don't mean that at all. They really work hard on this one-handed catch thing. I think the gloves have to be helping in a big way. Again, it's Stafford. That's to his running back, carry on Johnson. And this will result in him losing yardage. Back to the three. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that'll bring up a second and goal. Well, you throw it this close to the goal line, usually you're thinking touchdown. Here they actually complete it but lose yardage. When you're this close to the goal line, you have to anticipate that maybe you're going to see a defense that 
You can make a case that there's 11 in the box. There's just no room. So I'm with you. You've got to find a way to push things downfield a little bit. Any type of space is better than what we just saw there. And that end result, not one that's satisfactory to them. This Tampa Bay defense, they held strong on the first two plays. Now third and goal. From the gun, Stafford. And he's got his man. It's caught for a Lion touchdown. Keelan Cole there to make the grab as his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. Well, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Extra point good by Prater, and we are tied at seven. So that one a long 11-play drive. And the end result, a Detroit touchdown. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. For the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. They try to run on first down, but this defense says no dice. They stop them a couple yards behind the line of scrimmage. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Play fake, Rivers. That's caught by the big tight end, O.J. Howard. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. 23 yards the pick up there. A nice little completion there by Philip Rivers. And you and I were reading the article yesterday, fifth grade. Rivers had to do a project where he had to make a poster about his dreams and aspirations. So he clipped out a football player from a magazine article and pasted his face on the helmet. That's what he wanted to be, and it turned out okay. Not so bad. Not so bad at all. Remember, he's the son of a coach. And on that play, I think he made the old coach proud with that completion. They'll run with a former Tar Heel, T.J. Logan. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. It's a gain of 11, and the Bucs have a first down. At this stage of the game, the run-pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10, right at the 40. They'll run it here with Logan. And an alley to run. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. On second down, it's Logan. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Seven, seven, our score after one. First toss. He'll buy some time right. Finds his man, Watson, over the middle. And down inside the 15, go, shy of the 10. Go. It's a gain of 16, first down Tampa Bay. As a general rule, offensive linemen like to know where their quarterback's going to be when he's setting up to throw the football. But sometimes they just have to get on the run, get on the move. He was able to do that on that play and picks up a first down with a nice throw. Behind, 20, 
Barber on first and ten. And he's brought down. Ten more there and another first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. sneak here's Flacco no gain there as he kept it himself at second down oh yeah good surge defensively sometimes you can just tell by the way a quarterback lines his feet up behind center he's gonna try and sneak it in and they catch him here and stop and he's in touchdown Buccaneers TJ Logan taking it in and the Bucs have taken the lead no success on first down. He couldn't get any yardage. They give it to him again, and he finds the end zone. Sometimes it just has to be persistence, doesn't it? And you know who else helps with that? Yeah. Offensive line. After a team's been stuffed, the last thing they want to do is go to a different play call. They want to come back and do it again and show that they can dominate the line of scrimmage. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And that makes the score 14-7. to Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here come the Lions now. They trail a one-score deficit, 14-7, as they come up first and 10. Ready? 50, play. Start the drive on the ground with Johnson. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, people say bring in your tight end, keep him in. Your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line. The offensive line has to block them first here we go. Here we to give go. yourself a chance. Here we go. Now I think we're going to get a timeout here. Yes, a timeout here as it looks like we've got a lion that's shaken up. Definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. Ready, ready. 10-2 What we got? What we got? What we got? Let's go. The first down carry here for Johnson. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Plays like we just saw there, that's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs or putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. Back to throw here. He gets this one to Johnson. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Here's Ryan Quigley now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line. And it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked. But you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. And he'll go down at the 26 following a gain of six. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Here's Flacco. That's caught. It's Peyton Barber. 
And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that? Second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. A first down run, not going to get him a whole lot. Maybe a yard. Yeah, it looks like just one yard there. So that'll bring up second and nine. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half. And some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Let's go. Let's do it. What a play that turns out to be, 36 yards. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great, and what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10, just outside the 30. Running is Barber. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. It's a gain of 11, and the Bucks have a first down. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. to his left that is caught inside the five and he's brought down after a very nice game chewing up big yardage another nice game there this one goes for 20 great mix of play calling so far three runs three passes all three passes have been completions first and goal i think on defense now you have to almost take a chance rely on your scouting pick a play you think they would run here and just load up for it and see what happens They saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. They'll run with Barber, and he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Punching it in from a yard away as the Buccaneers tack on to their lead. They were able to push him backwards on first down, but this time he forces his way in. I wonder if he went back to the huddle and said, guys, just a little bit more help, and I can get it done on this one. Maybe even overruled the play call from the sideline, just feeling like he had that opportunity, and he wanted to cash it in. Extra point by Gay is up and good, and it's now 21-7. to So an eight-play drive covering 80 yards. And it's Peyton Barber that polishes it all off with a touchdown scamper. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him. All right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, if some guy, there got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Here's Johnson. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. 
Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. Four C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Pernell McPhee always a threat to find the QB, and he gets to him there. Well, someone's been up to the task so far in this game. They are already up a couple of scores, Brandon, and guess what? I think they're just going to pin their ears back now and get upfield and get after the quarterback. Been such an impressive first half to get that lead. Here's Ryan Quigley now as he's on to punt for Detroit. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. This is fielded at the 27. We'll call that a 49-yard punt with a return of just two. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Heading back out there, a look at Peyton Barber. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. Second quarter action with 1.59 remaining. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. You and Jonathan Coachman, both larger than life. No doubt about it. But you're stuck with me in this booth, <laughs> yes, and he's miles away and smiling. And happy. Flacco to throw here on third down. And that's complete. It's Watson. And he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. An effective seven-yard third down conversion. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Flacco now. A perfect 5 of 5 since taking over. They haven't missed a beat. First and 10. Here's Flacco. Throw left side complete. That's Hudson. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal. Because everything was right. Got the completion. But he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Looking to throw again on second down. Flacco eluding the pressure right. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Flush to his right. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. They'll run on first down. Barber. Credit the tackle to Darius Slay. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Now Flacco. And he rifles one incomplete. So it looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. Seventh play of the drive, fourth coming on third and eight. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. Well, the two men come together, and it's incomplete. 
Excellent work defensively. Brings up fourth down. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything that warranted a flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. And Gay knocks this one through. And that'll push the lead up to 17. So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays, and the net result, three points. Take your disappointment and put it aside. Nine plays, yeah, they want to end up in the end zone with a touchdown. I get that. But sometimes those nine-play drives pay dividends later with another nine-play drive that culminates in a touchdown when they wear down a defense. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. He's just been looking for some space. You know, I'm not going to pin it on him or the offensive line, but they need to get this run game going better. Sometimes you just have to credit the defense. They came in with a plan themselves. So I think now you try to mix things up a little bit. Get the ball in the hands of some other people. Find some other playmakers. But always let the defense believe that he's still a threat. I was going to say, don't forget about it. No, don't take him totally out of the game. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. And he comes back with one complete. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. And the box with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Ready, ready. They'll drop the throw. And unable to connect. If he had caught it, it would have been a first down. Instead, it's fourth. Let's look like another three and out here. And at some point, got to be able to put together a drive to keep your defense from having to go right back out on the field. I feel like things are starting to unravel a little bit. We're not even at halftime. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. Uh, we're under 20 seconds to go in the half. I'm guessing the wise play here is be safe. That is the wise play because if you think about trying to fool them here, here's what you're facing. You're facing a loosened up secondary playing a lot deeper than normal. So even if you run some type of misdirection, you're only going to fool them for a second or so. And guess what? They're so deep, they're really not going to be out of position. Take the knee, get to the locker room. So we have reached halftime in our first preseason matchup of the year. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! In our game, most of the starters have made their cameo and departed. But plenty of youngsters out there with a lot to gain or lose as we get you right back out to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
Probably not likely to see many starters in the second half as we get back at it underway in this preseason opener. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. The Lions offense now with a football first here to begin quarter at number three. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the side and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Again, it's Johnson. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Back to throw. This one complete to Lacey. It's a gain of 10 for the Lions and a first down. Third and four is always a tough call. Maybe a little too long to run for, but not too long to hit them on the quick slant. And that was well executed. Found the window and zipped it right in there. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Now a throw downfield is taken in by his running back. First down, Lions on a pickup of 13. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 46. They'll look to throw. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. It's a four-yard pickup, and that'll make it second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Running from the gun, Johnson. And they're able to swarm him behind the line, and his rough night continues. Now I think we're going to get a timeout here. Yes, a timeout here as it looks like we've got a lion that's shaken up. Definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They're going to look to throw. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. First down, Lions on a pickup of 13. This quarterback now, five straight completions here in this second half. First and 10. They'll set up a throw. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Wes Hills out of the backfield. And now it's second down. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Second and 10. And his throw here is incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive. And Galladay's got it, and the Lions have a touchdown. Kenny Galladay there to make the grab, and the Lions are able to cut into this lead. That's a score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there's an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Prater on to add the extra point. It's up and good, so they claw back into it. 24-14 now. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it's capped off by a touchdown for the Lions. And after the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. 
This will be taken in at the one. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. The third quarter has not been kind to them. After they built that lead at intermission, they've seen that lead shrink. And how much of that is simply execution? How much of that is maybe you lose your edge a little bit because you've got a lead? And you do have to credit the other team some because they've made some adjustments to start to slow them down. Can they find those counters now? Those extra plays or plays they haven't run that will be effective and get them back moving again. They'll be looking for something here. Anything to seize that momentum back. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Here we go. First down, Buccaneers. And here comes throw number one for the backup QB. He gets it to Thomas. A big pickup there, 18 yards and a Buccaneer first. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. A route running savvy and toughness, there's a premium for all of that now. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Here's Hogan Bawale. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. 14 yards there and a Buccaneer first down. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. This is incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only the DB's going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. Double this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guys. He is a well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. They're able to convert on third down and that sets up a first and goal. I think by now it's been demonstrated quite well in the NFL that mobility is an attribute. But when you couple it with accuracy, you've really got something going. You're able to get outside the pocket and complete the pass. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. Defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. So now then the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. This is caught by Dari Ogunbowale. And the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Looking at this now, you got a couple more cracks here this close. Sneak it. I don't think you even go into a huddle. Just line up, snap it, and fall in behind those guys into the end zone. From the two now, second and goal. A play action fake. They'll look to throw. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. Christian Jones coming in hard there on the blitz, and he gets him seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. When you're this close to the goal line, you've got to expect pressure from the defense, so the ball's got to come out fast. Got to get out of his hands quicker. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? They'll look to throw here. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. 
quarterbacking 101. Never force the ball into double coverage, especially not this close to the goal line. The windows are so tight. You just don't want to force it in there because it could be tipped up and picked off. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. No, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone, get you six? This is fielded a couple yards deep. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two-minute. Who knows? Let's we'll see what they decide to do. Second and six. Catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Looking to throw. This one caught by Davis. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. First down for the Lions on a nice pickup of 18 yards. This quarterback now, 10 of 16, throwing the football. It's first and 10. Watch They run the counter. Kills. And not a lot of daylight. Not really any daylight inside as he's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Brings up second down. They'll keep it on the ground. Hills. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. Up front, the struggles continue for this offense among the line. What can they do? Change the play calling? What? I think part of that, yes. Changing some of the play calls, some screens, some draws, some misdirection. You want to run any type of a play that will influence these guys to continue to get upfield and find a way to use that against them and slip things in behind them. So some quick passes could work as well. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good, and this score will stay right where it is. Down here in the third quarter, obviously that's one they could have used. Yeah, one of my favorite special teams coaches in the NFL told me what separates the kickers in the NFL versus the ones who are not is not the misses. It's the second miss in a row. Best kickers in the league, they don't miss two in a row. He's got to get his head back together in case he gets another shot. Looks like he's going to get a couple here on this first down carry, and that'll make it second and eight. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more preseason football on EA Sports. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Escaping the pressure right. Got his man on the comebacker. It's Shepard. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 14 yards there and a Buccaneer first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. On the carry, it's Logan. And he'll have a gain of three to the 33. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like nowhere to go here. He lost the football, and this is scooped up by the Lions. And they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. You know, this is the regular season, partner. We'd be talking about just how costly a mistake that was, but probably good for him to get it out of his system right now. Just hope for him and the team it's not a sign of things to come. Yeah, without a doubt. Plus, you got to worry about making the team. Those types of errors don't help you. And Detroit getting set to go now. Down. 
They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at the 40. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And he will find his man on the outside. It's a gain of 14 and a first down for Detroit. Thank you, sir. Back to throw now on first down. Pass incomplete. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch as the arm there, the legs still there. This has been a tough game. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. The Lions on third down. They've hit on half of them. Five for ten. This is third and seven. Neutral zone infraction. Defense. So they jumped on the left side of that line. And you know when you're at the end spot, you are like in the starting blocks, waiting for the pistol to fire and go. And he jumped a little bit too early. He'll look to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they like some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Here we go. Now listen, now no kick from 50-plus is a gimme, but here you're indoors in a dome. You'd think ideal conditions. Yeah, and it's one that he would expect himself to make, not just us expecting him to make it. Over the years, my theory is very simple. The athletic ability of kickers continues to get better and better. Check their backgrounds. They were all county, all state, and other positions, not just soccer players. These guys expect themselves to be great as well. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. He'll drop to throw. He's going to rifle one deep left side. This is caught inside the 15. A big play that time for Tampa Bay. 44 yards. Just more of the same there, partner. Guys have just been running free in the secondary this entire game. No pass rush. A lot of passes completed. Been an easy day for him. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Now a give right side. Logan. And they'll go backwards here. Losing yardage to the 14. A good response by the defense, sending them backwards after that huge game last play. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine. With and he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. A 14-yard touchdown as the Buccaneers tack on to their lead. They had the lead in the fourth, but still passing. Finding the big target for the touchdown. Now that lead grows even more. Everybody gets to join in the fun. You know, it doesn't have to just be the wide receivers catching touchdown passes. The tight end doesn't just have to do just the dirty work inside. He gets a chance to get into the end zone as well. Now the Bucks' offense will stay out there as they'll go for two. They'll try and run it up the middle. And he will get into the end zone to extend the lead by two more. And so they run it in on the two-point try. And it's so often, Charles, we talk about from the offense's perspective what you do on the two-point conversion. How about the defense? How do they play run versus pass? It's really difficult for them because I think most teams want to play for the pass. That's what they see most teams do. And so are you able to mass enough people inside if the team decides to run it? Very difficult. I think what you're seeing a lot more now, people blitzing the two-point conversion. They want you to make a quick decision and make it right now. There the offense wins the battle for two. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. And last time out, another missed field goal. So maybe their confidence wavering a little bit right now in the kicking game. And I'm with you on that. I think at this stage, they'd love to not run him back out there in a tough situation. But let's face it, they may have to. So right now, the head coach is talking to the offense coordinator and saying, 
call this game like we're going to put it in the end zone. Let's try and take the field goal out of it. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Back to throw here. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Kenny Galladay is intended receiver. And it's second down. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Now back to throw. A 50-50 ball here, and it's intercepted. Picked up by M.J. Stewart. And his guys are going to get the football at their own 47-yard line. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent, and now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. Now the Buccaneer offense set to take over again. Now that turnover might just about do it. Here, fourth quarter, the lead that you've got, they can just run the football, run the clock. Exactly right. They played smart, a couple of first downs, and this one should just about be over. A run with Ogan Bawale. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. They run it. It's Ogan Bawale. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. Second and five. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, as it turned out. Couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. A handoff here to Ogan Bawale. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play. Holding them with no gain. And this is good. He got just enough to clear the crossbar as he drops it in from long distance. And that will extend their lead even further. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? The punter pinion now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now out comes their leader and the captain of this offense back onto the field. And that interception that ended their previous drive likely also ended any shot they had a victory. Yeah, long road back from here, no doubt about that one. But let's face it, if you're going to go out there and compete, you want to try and end on a strong note, don't you? Absolutely. It won't end any victory, like you said, but they can maybe take something positive out of this one. Second and two. 
his man out of the backfield, complete. Four yards, the pickup, first down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Here's second and eight. He'll give this one to Galladay. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Lions in possession of the football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Kenny Galladay, the intended receiver, but it's going to be second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll drop the throw. Looking for his running back, and he's got it. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Back to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. But at this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. They blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Now they got to get to the line quickly. They'll set up to throw. And that's knocked away and incomplete. They went with the dime look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through, and they get a little bit closer here as the lead's down to three touchdowns. Well, in the grand scheme of things, those three points likely not going to matter much, but I guess they get a little closer, a little more respectability. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been out playing all game long, but like my mom used to tell me all the time before I went out, dress up a little bit, son. Make yourself respectable. And that's what they're doing here. They're just dressing up the final score. And the Buccaneers able to recover. Their hands team does its job. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And... I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. This is Logan. And he gets it down to the 32. Four yards the pickup, first down. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. They run with Logan. And he'll be taken down here, and that is how this one is going to come to an end. So time has run out on what will be a Tampa Bay victory.
And really, it looked at times like they just had this one in cruise control out there. Yeah, they deserve a ton of credit because you and I both know, heck, they knew. But this is a tough place to play. Overcame that with ease, romped home with an easy win. And here's the best part for them. It'd be easy to get to the airport because the crowd left pretty early in this one, didn't it? Well, plus they have a police escort. Okay, you had to spoil <laughs> that part of it. Of course, they're going to get there. But think about how wide open things are now because this crowd didn't expect this. No. So they went back to the tailgate and said, let's go eat. This, is, this one did any fun for us. Yeah, they took the drama out of this one pretty early on. I'm Brandon Gordon. Certainly have to thank Charles Davis, my broadcast partner, and our entire crew. We'll catch you next time right here. It's the NFL on EA Sports.